Hello guys, welcome to our channel. We will be discussing on general idea about cell surface receptors and in detail GPCR or G-protein coupled receptors. Today's topic is GPCR regulated production of cyclic MP and protein kinase A or PKA activation. In order to understand what is GPCR and how does it function, we have to first understand what are receptors. Receptors are specialized structures made of protein molecules such as glycoproteins that can be found in cell membranes or in cytoplasm or even in the nucleus. Glycoproteins are proteins that are connected with carbohydrate chains. Receptors bind or attach to these uh, specialized molecules called ligands which make the receptors activated. We know that there are two types of receptors. These are cell surface receptors and nuclear receptors superfamily. Nucleus receptors are ligand modulated gene regulatory proteins. They have two binding domains, one ligand binding domain and the other is DNA binding domain. Ligands for these receptors are small and lipophilic or hydrophobic so that they can pass through the plasma membrane. These receptors include steroid hormone receptors, vitamin D receptors, thyroid hormone receptors, retinoic acid receptors, etc. Cell surface receptors on the other hand are present in the plasma membrane. The ligands are hydrophilic and cannot cross the plasma membrane. There are three classes of cell surface receptors. First is the ion channel linked receptor, then G protein coupled receptor and the third enzyme linked receptors. Now ion channel linked receptors are also known as transmitter gated or <clears throat> Ionotropic receptors. These receptors are involved in rapid synaptic signaling between nerve cells and other electrically excitable target cells such as nerve and muscle cells. This type of signaling is mediated by a small number of neurotransmitters. The receptors are actually like gates whose opening and closings are regulated by these ions that bind to the receptors. It is quite similar to ligand gated ion channels like IP3 channel. We will discuss about these receptors later. Most ion channel linked receptors belong to a large family of homologous multipass transmembrane proteins. Now coming to the second G protein coupled receptors, these receptors indirectly regulate the activity of separate plasma membrane bound target proteins that can be either an enzyme or an ion channel. Here a trimeric GTP binding protein called G protein mediates the interaction between the activated receptor and the target protein. So without the G protein interacting with the receptor, the receptor cannot mediate the downstream signaling. This occurs in case of receptor desensitization. And the third type is the enzyme linked receptors. So these receptors function directly as enzymes or are associated with enzymes that they activate. They are usually single pass transmembrane proteins that have their ligand binding site on the external side whereas the catalytic or enzyme binding site on the cytoplasmic side. Examples of these receptors include RTK or receptor tyrosine kinase. Now we will be discussing about signaling through GPCR or G protein coupled receptors. G protein coupled receptors are present in all the eukaryotes. It is the largest family of cell surface receptors. It mediates most responses to signals from the external world as well as signals from other cells like hormones, neurotransmitters and local mediators. Even the sense of light or sight, smell and taste depends on them. There are more than 700 types of GPCRs found in humans. At least 831 human genes, that is about 4% of the protein coding genes in human code for G protein coupled receptors. GPCRs are classified into six classes from class A to class F. Ligands of GPCRs include proteins and small peptides, derivatives of amino acids and fatty acids, photons of light, and all the molecules that we can smell or taste. About 150 types of GPCRs are found and that are orphan receptors. Now orphan receptors are receptors whose ligands are still unknown. Although different types of signaling molecules can activate GPCRs, the structure of all the GPCRs are quite similar. 
the gpc is consists of a single polypeptide chain that can pass back and forth across the lipid bilayer seven times as thus the receptor is also called the serpentine receptor they all use primary gtp binding proteins called g proteins to relay the signal into the cell interior about half of all known drugs work through gpcrs or the signaling pathways that gpcrs activate it is quite astonishing now coming to the structure of the g protein it is composed of three protein subunit these are alpha beta and gamma the alpha and the gamma subunits remain attached to the lipid bilayer whereas the beta subunit is attached with the gamma subunit in the unstimulated condition the alpha beta and the gamma subunits remain together while gdp or guanosine diphosphate remain bound to the alpha subunit as it is result the g protein remains inactive and forms a single complex here we can see an inactive receptor with inactive gdp bound g protein when an extracellular mo molecule that is ligand binds to a g protein coupled receptor or gpcr the receptor undergoes a conformational change that allows it to activate the g protein activated gpcrs act like guanine nucleotide exchange factor or gef this gef induces the alpha subunit to release its bound gdp the removal of the gdp leads to the automatic binding of gtp or guanosine triphosphate to the alpha subunit due to high concentration of gtp in the cytosol this exchange results in the activation of g alpha and causes a large conformational change in the g protein this conformational change results in dissociation of the g alpha from the g beta gamma complex originally it was thought that the activation by gtp always causes the g alpha beta gamma trimer to dissociate into two activated complex that is alpha and beta gamma complex but there is now no evidence to prove that activated g proteins now target either enzymes or ion channels that are embedded in the plasma membrane and delay the signal forward the g alpha subunit is a gtpase gtpases are enzymes that hydrolyze gtp into gdp and thus inactivate the target protein here g alpha the time for which the g protein remains active depends on how fast the gtpase activity takes place in the alpha subunit this time is usually short because the gtpase activity is greatly enhanced by the binding of the alpha subunit to a second protein called rgs rgs stands for regulator of g protein signaling the rgs acts as a alpha subunit specific gtpase activating proteins or caps these caps help shut the g protein mediated responses in polyvariates so the gpcr mediated signaling is not on all base gpcr regulated production of cyclic mp cyclic mp is synthesized from cytosolic atp by a plasma membrane bound enzyme called adenylyl cyclase it is also rapidly and continuously destroyed by cyclic amp phosphodiesterase so cyclic amp concentration can be increased by increasing the activity of adenylyl cyclase against a steady background of phosphodiesterase activity adenylyl cyclase is a large multiplus transmembrane protein with its cytosolic domain on the cytosolic side of the plasma membrane this catalytic site performs reaction that results in the formation of cyclic amp from cytosolic atp gpcs that are coupled to a stimulated g protein or gas increase cyclic amp by activating adenylyl cyclase on the other hand another g protein called inhibitory g protein or gi inhibits adenylyl cyclase by regulating ion channels cyclic amp dependent activation of protein kinase a here we can see activated gpcr with its ligand here the activated g alpha phosphorylates adenylyl cyclase and activates it 
Activated and enabled cyclase in turn converts cytosolic ATP into cyclic AMP or CAMP. As a result, cyclic AMP concentration increases in the cytosol. Through PKA or protein kinase A, cyclic AMP mediates most of the effects in the cell. This cyclic AMP interacts with protein kinase A or PKA and activates it. To understand how PKA activation occurs by cyclic AMP, let's see this diagram. Here we can see the inactive PKA has two regulatory and two catalytic subunits. We know that in regulatory or allosteric enzymes, there are regulatory sites in addition to catalytic sites. While the catalytic sites interact with substrates of the enzyme and convert them into products, the regulatory sites interact with regulatory molecules like activators or inhibitors that regulate the activity of the enzyme. Similarly here, the cyclic AMP molecules interact with the two regulatory subunits and causes them to dissociate from the catalytic ones. This results in activation of the protein kinase. The released catalytic subunits go to the nucleus and activated, activate the phosphorylate activate by phosphorylating specific serine or threonine residues on other target proteins like intracellular signaling proteins or effector proteins thereby regulating their activity. The regulatory, regulatory subunits of PKA also called A kinase are important for localizing the kinase inside the cell. In unstimulated cells, the phosphodiesterase enzyme keeps the local cyclic AMP concentration low so that the bound PKA remains inactive. This is because in unstimulated cells, the GPCR is not activated so no cyclic AMP production takes place by adenylyl cyclase. The PKA also phosphorylates and activates phosphodiesterase in these cells which rapidly lowers the cyclic AMP concentration again. This results in a PKA response that is strong and brief. An example of cyclic AMP regulated response is the cells that secrete the peptide hormone somatostatin. Here the responses mediated by cyclic AMP depends on changes in gene transcription. Cyclic AMP activates the gene that encodes this hormone somatostatin. The regulatory region of the somatostatin gene contains a short DNA sequence called cyclic AMP response element or tree which is also found in the regulatory region of many other genes activated by cyclic AMP. The short DNA sequence CRE is recognized by a specific gene regulatory protein called cyclic AMP response element binding protein or CREP protein. Here the activated PKA phosphorylates a single serine residue on CREP. This phosphorylated CRAVE then recruits a transcriptional co-activator called CRAVE binding protein or CBP that stimulates the transcription of the tra target genes. So CRAVE can transform a short cyclic AMP signal into a long term change in a cell. This process is thought to play important part in forming memory and learning. But protein kinase does not mediate all the functions of cyclic AMP in animal cells. In olfactory neurons, cyclic AMP directly activates ion channels in cell membrane. In other cells, cyclic AMP activates a guanine nucleotide exchange factor or GEF which activates a monomeric GTPase called RAP1. This often leads to increased cell adhesion through the activation of cell surface integrins. So, today we have learned about different types of receptors. We have discussed in detail how the major cell surface receptor GPCR regulate gene expression in animal cells through cyclic A, P and protein kinase A. We will discuss about GPCR mediated inositol phospholipid or IP3 signaling pathway in our next video. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Thank you and stay home, stay safe and study online.